Hello, thank you for attending this uh, podcast. I have a very special guest here. My name is Si Wing Yi from the Yi Real Estate Network. We've been taking out of state investors to buy pro- cash flow turnkey, cash flow and appreciation properties in the best real estate markets in the country. And for like that, for, for many, many years now, we have helped hundreds of hundred investors from not only from California, from all those uh, expensive markets in our country and uh, to buy, again, very, very good properties in very good locations for long-term wealth building. So uh, thank you for attending. My special guest is uh, Ar- uh, Arian Shihab, Shiha, and he represents Value Builders. As a matter of fact, let me give you a quick background. I, uh, uh, we have worked in the past. We uh, uh, Value Builders have worked with our, our organization in the past few years ago. Uh, unfortunately, the broker uh, that we work with, uh, he's uh, no longer around. So, uh, so uh, value builders, they have a very unique uh, uh, you know, system. They are the leading, it is just purely my opinion. <laughs> they are very, they have a unique niche in this market. They, they specialize in luxury uh, multi-units duplex to a fourplex in the they promote this in the best locations in Texas as a matter of fact a few years ago uh, you guys started back in uh, Austin three or four years ago and not realizing how hot Austin is going to be and every community is you guys built as value builders uh, I mean you sold out in all the community duplex 30 40 duplex in each community uh, 30 or 40 fourplex in each community from San Antonio up to Austin then. Uh, and those properties have done very well. They are in A-class uh, locations, neighborhood. And now uh, value builders are venturing into Houston and also Dallas. But today we could talk about the Houston Metroplex, the duplex is, uh, is, a, is an amazing product. Uh, uh, like I said, it's a brand new luxury, <laughs> uh, which is very rare, okay? I'm, I've done, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I look at all over the country. You're not gonna find the value uh, that you can find uh, using using this company set with a turnkey approach. So without further ado, <laughs> Arian, he got some good mar- marketing materials to promote. So uh, take it away, Arian. And <laughs> Well, Siwing, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to speak to your investors in your network. So what I want to talk to you about today, let me just share my screen here okay. and we can jump straight into it. All right, can you see my, can you yes. see the material? Yes, I can. Okay, so the project that we're going to be talking about today is called Dobbin Meadows and it's located in Magnolia, Texas. And it, this is in the Houston MSA. Uh, and, and you know, for those of you that don't know, Houston is the economic heartbeat of Texas. So when, you know, the, the port of Houston, the oil and gas industry, healthcare, all of those industries are primarily based in Houston uh, that drive the Texas economy. This particular project is a uh, is built as a section of a neighborhood that is built by DR Horton. DR Horton is the number one builder in the country, uh, and they are building single family homes in a community that they're developing, and they essentially sold the section to value builders to develop these um, attached townhomes that are sold as a duplex, luxury class A attached townhomes. And to give you an, an idea, Builders like DR Horton don't like having multifamily in their communities, but they like this type of multifamily because it, it goes well with what they're building on the other side. In other words, this is not a sort of an apartment complex type of product. This is like you said, a luxury and class A type of product. So let's just jump in. Um, and um, uh, the, the part of this project where we are right now is phase two. So this project has a total of 80 duplexes. Phase one had 40. Those 40 were sold out before there were even you know, any building going on. And this is very typical for value builders that we have um, a very high repeat rate among investors. 
In other words, 75% of all the duplexes that we sell, they sell to people who are either repeat or referral clients. People who have bought before, they've seen the results for themselves, and then now they're ready. Uh, because this is like, I think there's a lot of benefits, but the number one benefit is that this is a very repeatable business model. In other words, if you buy this type of duplex, it's like you said, it's turnkey, it's class A, it's luxury, it's in areas that there's high growth and high tenant demand. So you can rinse and repeat this model. So there's so many investors that have basically followed value builders around wherever they're, they've built across Texas. So they built in Austin, bought, bought a duplex there, it worked out. Then they went to Dallas, then they went to San Antonio, then now they're coming to Houston because it's a very repeatable business model. And a lot of the investors that we work with, and I'm sure that some of the people in the audience are in this group as well, they tend to be like successful professionals. They're, they're attorneys, they're doctors, they're business owners. So they want an investment that is as turnkey as possible. Like this is, they want something that's as passive as possible for them because they've got really busy lifestyles and they don't have time to be dealing with an investment full time. They want something that's going to work on day one. And they, they want something that's going to be what I like to call a beautifully boring investment. In other words, you don't want an investment that's adventurous with all kinds of stuff happening, with all kinds of drama happening. You want it to be beautifully boring, meaning tenants pay their rent, your mortgage is paid, cash flow is left over, rinse and repeat month after month, boring and beautiful month after month. Okay? Yeah, Arian. So Arian, yeah. if I may say something, uh, this this community is located very close to Woodlands. Uh, uh, I, I know Woodlands is a very upscale community. I mean, there are multi-million dollar homes all over Woodlands. So this community is only a few miles away from this great yeah. Woodland area. Am I right? <laughs> You're absolutely right. I think in the Woodlands, you, in order to buy a piece of land, you have to give up a kidney or a liver or something <laughs> because it's very, very expensive. Um, this particular community and, and in general, what value builders try to do is buy and develop properties that are in the path of growth, right? Meaning, you know, Austin 10 or 15 years ago was in the path of growth. It was a nice town. People liked living there, but the growth had not happened yet. So Value Builders goes there, develops, and then the growth comes, and then you ride, you ride the wave up. Yep. So Magnolia is three miles west of the woodlands, and it is a, a market that is landlocked by growth. On the west, you have the woodlands, which is fully built out, very expensive. Like you said, multi-million dollar homes, one of the premier uh, communities, master plan communities in the country, but definitely in Houston. And then on the north side, you have Conroe, and that's exploded and developed really high. On the south side, you have Tomball, and that's exploded and developed really high. So all of this area right, is in the path of that growth, because as those areas grow, they can't grow within themselves anymore because everything's so expensive. So they have to grow out. So the woodlands now is likely to grow further west, uh, not inside of the woodland. And that's what this community will benefit from. Um, the Magnolia area has had 50% population growth in the last 10 years. Right, And you don't have to be a mathematician to know that if you have 50% population growth every decade, the area is going to grow tr tremendously because as population growth, so does real estate, so does retail. So you, know, you need to build new schools, you need to build new malls, new restaurants, new retail centers. So the whole area grows. Um, this phase two, like I said, has 40 duplexes total. We release them in batches of 10. Um, and the current batch that we're on uh, is expected to be completed in November of 2022, right? And the prices are uh, 499,900. Um, so let's just go through some of the, the highlights. The floor plan of, uh, that these duplexes have is, is called the Fairhaven, is 2662 square feet. Each side has three bedroom, two bath, two car garage with a fenced in backyard. So these, these townhomes, if you will, they feel more like single family homes, right? Like when you go there, it does not feel like an apartment. It feels like you're in a home and that's why they rent so well. These are individually platted and attached townhomes. 
that's a huge advantage because most duplexes are one building. So when you have one building, you have to sell the entire duplex together to somebody. And most likely you will sell it to an investor. Well, investors, we like numbers, right? Like we make decisions based on numbers. These are individually uh, platted townhomes, which means that you could in the future sell individual units. You could sell them as townhomes. And when you sell them as townhomes, the advantage is that now you're selling to end users and end users a lot of times don't make decisions with their based on numbers they base make decisions based on do they like it do they love it you know is like more heart based decisions the property tax rate in this area is 3.27 now i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, arian so what, what, if i hear you correctly uh mm -hmm. if a investor after they purchase duplex in the future if they were to sell their duplex and i'm not think that and i'm not saying they should you know right. my philosophy is yours philosophy buy in the hole for a long 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 time but right. if they were to sell for whatever reason you mean not only they could sell to a potential future investor they could sell it to a future primary home owner occupied buyers am i right yeah. Yes, and the advantage there is that when you sell it individually, you could sell it for a higher combined price than if you were to sell the entire building. Because when you're selling to, like something like this would be somebody's first home, right? You know, somebody's starter home, right? Well, when you look at Houston, 10 years ago, starter homes, for, uh, to get a starter home, you'd have to pay maybe 150,000. And today, to get a starter home, you're paying 275000 right? And we can kind of see what will happen in the future where, you know, it's not unusual for areas that are, you know, high growth like this, that have good schools and so on, for a starter home to be in the three fifty, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 range. I mean, you've seen that in California all the time. Um, so that, to me represents a unique opportunity. And I've seen this movie play out in Austin where we've had investors that have bought a duplex that could be sold individually like this. And seven, 10 years later, they can sell one side for what they paid for the whole, for the whole duplex. So I think that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. Oh, by the way, the property tax, uh, you know, uh, you know, concerns a lot of people. So you can clarify the, the property tax associated with this investment. So we, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. So property taxes are 3.27 in this uh, in this area. Now, people from California might look at that and say, wow, that's huge. That's a, that's really high. Right. And it is compared to probably what we see over there. But there's a couple of things to understand. In, in Texas, about half of the property tax rate is the schools. So in other words, the better the schools, the higher the taxes. Right. Um, so you don't want a property tax rate that's too low because that means that typically means that the, that the schools are largely underfunded, right? And you don't want underfunded schools because usually those areas that have underfunded schools, people don't want to live there because especially in the suburbs, you know, one of the reasons why people choose to live in the suburbs and not in the city is because the school schools are better. Like they want, they're typically, they tend to be families. They want to have their kids to have a good education. So that's part of the, uh, the tax rate situation. The second part to understand is, when you look at taxes, taxes are an equation of tax value times tax rate. So even if the tax rate is high, you know, like just to ask you a question, a duplex like this new construction in the Bay Area, how much would it cost? Uh, the square footage, give me, give me a, a square footage. Uh, 600 square feet. 1500 square foot? Uh, 2600. Oh, 2600 square foot. Uh, depending where, if it is close to San Jose, or San Francisco, it'll be like three million, three million dollars. Okay, what if it's in the suburbs, like out in out of the city? Uh, we're talking one thousand dollars per square foot. So, okay. two so you're talking about two point six million, right? Right. So that's the that's my point is that if you have a duplex that's two point six million, but the tax rate is one percent, that's not better than a duplex who the tax rate is three point two seven percent, but the value is five hundred. Right, so in other words, you get a lot more, and the prices are a lot lower here for the same thing. Right, so overall, it it balances out. Um, and also on the tax rates, typically um, there's a little bit of a of an on ramp that happens. And what I mean by that is, 
typically the first year that, it, that you buy a duplex, the taxes are really low because the tax values come out at the beginning of the year. So when you, when you're, let's say if you were to buy something now and then close in November, right? The tax valuations already came out for this property in February. So in February, there was no duplex there. It was just a lot, it was just the land. So the first year that you buy the property, the taxes are based on just the value of the dirt. And then the second year, the tax value, you know, starts reaching more towards the, the true value. And then only after the third year do you get to the taxable value that that will give you the full estimated taxes that we have on our pro forma. So my point is the taxes that we have in our pro forma are what they're going to be fully grown, but they're not going to be fully grown for two to three years because that, that is how it happens with new construction in Texas. Like it takes time for the tax value to grow into the value that it's going to be. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Now the, the rents uh, in this area are projected to be $1,895 per month per door. So per side of the duplex. The One of the advantage of buying in phase two is that the rents in this market are already proven. You know, when you buy in phase one, you buy one of the first few duplexes. If the builder says, well, the rents are gonna be this. You say, well, how do I know? Well, you don't know, right? You have to take the builder's experience and you know, and their prediction ability in good faith. Well, now you do know because there's, there's 40, 50 duplex units that have already been leased out. So the market is already established you know, for, um, for the rent that we're talking about. So, so, um, so I know this is projection, 1895 per door. Now, given uh, we've been hearing, right, there are skyrocketing rents all over the country due to uh, many factors. Do you, uh, do you foresee this 1895 rent per door to increase a little bit uh, toward the uh, end of this year when, the, when these uh, uh, structures are finished completely? Yes. Uh, yeah, I believe so, because the rents last year in Houston, on average, went up, I believe, 12%, and they are predicted to go up another 12% this year. Um, and another thing that's happening is now that we're in a situation where you know, interest rates are getting to be a little bit higher, there are people who maybe would qualify to buy a home when the interest rate was 2% or 2.7%, but they can't qualify when the interest rate is 3.5%. Right, so a lot of those people can't buy a home, so it's going to push them to be more into renters for the time being. So what that what that means is there's going to be even more tenant demand than what we have. Um, one interesting fact about this community, when they started leasing the first 20 units uh, of phase one that came available, and you drove the neighborhood, half of the 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 tenants' cars did not have Texas tags on them. They were from California. They were from Massachusetts. They were from New York. These are all the people that are coming to Texas. And, you know, because COVID really pushed people into figuring out like, well, if I can work from home, then why do I have to live in this area that's very expensive to live and be cold and be, you know, and, and live um, a really hard life when I can go to Texas, I can go to Florida and it's warm and it's cheaper and I can still do my same job that I'm doing. Yep. So there's a lot of people coming into the area. The HOA dues are $700 per duplex per year, right? Uh, this is one of the things that you mentioned. Value Builders has this niche where their target customer, their target purchaser is an investor. 99% of the properties that they build are sold to investors. So when they build the community and they take a look at the cost structure, they're very sensitive to we need to keep the cost low because that's how it creates the cash flow for the investors. So like there are, there are some other builders, like even larger national builders that are starting to build townhomes now, but they don't understand. They build them almost like condos and they have really high HOA dues, two, three, four hundred dollars a month per side, which basically kills the cash flow. So what value builders does, it keeps the cost low so that you can make, you can uh, operate the property better. The HOA dues do include the landscaping of the front yards. That's part of the HOA dues. And that's very, very important in the curb appeal of the community. So when you go to a value builders community that was built 10 years ago, it looked like it looks like it was built yesterday. 
And the reason is it's not up to everybody individually to, to maintain the lawns. There's a, the HOA maintains the lawns, at least in the front for the entire community. And the back lawns is something that it's fenced in anyway. So even if somebody doesn't cut it as regularly, it's, it's not as much of a concern about the curb appeal of the neighborhood. Um, the leasing fees um, that the management company, so there's a, proper, a professional property management company in place, and it's mandatory to use them for the first year. Um, and they are there at a preferential rate of 5% of monthly rent. The going market rate for property management in Houston is 8 to 10%. So it's basically you're getting it at, you know, 40 to 50 percent off. And the reason why you're getting it at that rate is because they get all the units. So there it's almost like a volume discount, if you will. Yep. Um, the, the deal that the property management company has with value builders is that they can't raise that rate if the person chooses to stay with them. So in the future, they can't, can't come and say, well, now it's seven, now it's eight, now it's ten. That is fixed. And that's the deal that they made. Um, the leasing fee, which is the placement fee for the tenant, is anywhere from 65 to 100% of one month's rent. And that depends on whether the tenant that comes in, do they have an agent or do they not have an agent? If they don't have an agent representing them, it's 65. If they do, it's 100%. Now, you might look at that and say, well, that's high. But the thing you have to keep in mind is that the average tenancy for a value builder's community historically has been three to four years. So in other words, a tenant stays in a property an average of three to four years. So you're paying 65 to 100% of one month's rent for that tenancy. So essentially what you're doing is you're, you're paying, in the case of the 100% rent, you're paying 30% per year for every year that that tenant stays there because they don't stay there one year. They sign one year leases, but then they renew, they renew. Um, some of them, like I own a value builders duplex in Dallas that is 10 years old. And the tenant that is on one of my units is the original tenant from the, when the duplex was built. They've been there 10 years, you know? So, so because, you know, if you have a good property management company, uh, if you take care of the people, you know, if they're, if it's a nice product, people stay, they, they don't, they don't move. And then all utilities are, are paid by tenants and uh, your build is 2022. So I wanted to show you a little bit of the finishes. Um, so like you said, with valuability is class A luxury. Um, so they, they, in the main areas, they put liquid, I mean, uh, luxury vinyl plank floors that are, that have that, you know, uh, hardwood look, but they are also water resistant. So you don't have issues with, you know, if there's a water leak, you don't have to replace it. It's very water resistant. So it's very good for rentals. Um, they've got German cabinets. They've got granite countertops. Um, this particular, um, a set of finishes, it's called a cold um, a color scheme. They also have a warm color scheme where the cabinets are brown and the colors are beige. So they have different options for different uh, people. Um, the, the 2662 plan has two units that are slightly different from each other. One is a wide open floor plan, mo modern, like big island in the middle, and then overlooks the living room and the, and the dining area. And the other one is more of a traditional kitchen that has an island inside the kitchen. And it's more sort of squarish and more like what you would see in a house. And that's a way of making it where you have something for, for everyone, you know, something, uh, different options for different uh, preferences. Uh, Arian, what, what are the warranties associated with this? Uh... Okay, yeah, great question. So the warranties are you get a one year wall to wall warranty, meaning anything that breaks, it's covered the first year. Um, the, uh, the mechanical uh, and plumbing and electrical, that's a two year warranty. Um, some of the appliances and systems, you can extend the warranty by simply registering it. So for example, the AC unit, has a two-year warranty, but if you register it, you can take the warranty to three years, and then you have a 10-year structural and foundation warranty. So it's a it's a it's a one, two, ten, and it's a typical builder builder coverage. Very good, very good. Um, and uh, so again, even the 
the, the you know even in the bathroom uh, you've got the, the the hard countertops the the, the nickel plated um, um, well, brush nickel fixtures um, again very wide open floor plans they've got ceiling fans in the living room in all the bedrooms uh, they come with the blinds they come with um, yeah so even in the you know I was saying even in the bathrooms um, you've got the the hard countertops the same German cabinets the brush nickel finishes. Um, we've got ceiling fans in the living area and all the bedrooms. Uh, they they saw the back in the front yard uh, with grass, which a lot of builders, some builders don't do. Some builders just do the front, and you got to do you got to go in and do a lot of things yourself after the fact. And he wants it to be as turnkey as possible. Um, the bedrooms are 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 good sized. The backyard, like every unit has a fenced in backyard, uh, covered patio. Um, and you know one of the, uh, the the important thing to understand is who is the target tenant for this type of property. Okay, so the the target tenant for us for this type of property is not the tenant that wants to rent a rental house like a single family house. Whoever wants to rent a single family house is going to go and rent a single family house. Our target tenants are people who are in luxury apartments, a three bedroom luxury apartment because we can win that battle every day of the week. Because in a, in a luxury three bedroom apartment near the woodlands will cost you anywhere from $1,900 to $2,500. But in a luxury apartment, you don't get a fenced in backyard. You don't have a covered patio to grill in. You don't have a, a two car garage, right? And you've got neighbors like to the left of you, to the top of you and to the bottom of you, right? So when they look at this and they say that for the same price or sometimes even a lower price, they can get a larger unit with a garage, with a fenced in backyard. That's a very easy battle for us to win for that quality tenant. Yep, agreed. Because one thing to remember and also to keep in mind who the types of tenants are, in order to qualify to rent a property that's $1,900, your income has to be four times the amount of the rent, right? Which means that somebody to qualify to live here they need to be making somewhere between seventy and eighty thousand dollars a year in income, right? So, so a lot of times, what you're do, what you're getting is people who are you know young professionals, but these are people who have more disposable income. These are not the types of tenants that you know if their car broke down, they can't pay the rent. Like there's a more disposable income for this type of tenant, if that makes any sense. Yep, totally. Um, this is uh, now on the exterior. So this is the Fair Haven. Uh, floor plan in the exterior uh, the, so the floor plans are the same but they have five different elevations of the exterior some of them have this sort of roof like this some of them have the pitched roof and the reason being is they don't want the community to be all the same building over and over and over again they want to create a sense of community and a sense of some variation so because they have five different elevations you know the next duplex is just like yours is at least five duplexes down Right, so you you don't have this like long street full of the same product over and over again. Right. Um, Good to know. Good uh, to know. So the exterior. This is the you know they go with very modern open floor plans, which is what tenants want want these days. Um, again, views of the covered patio. Even the the quality of the carpet is is meant to be more durable, so that you don't have to change it as often as an investor. So everything is done with the investor in mind. And uh, the with the operation of the property as an investment property. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the location. So uh, this is the area, the the woodland that we're talking about. So you can see, like even from the map, you can see that in this map there's like five golf courses, right within a three mile radius. So so this whole area is very um, luxurious. You know, you got Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. Um, you know, it's one of the the exclusive areas of Houston. The 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 project is about three miles from Woodlands Parkway. So Woodlands Parkway is the main thoroughfare of the Woodlands. So from here to there is about three miles, and you know there's no more. So anywhere here, there's no more land to develop that doesn't cost you an organ, right? Like it's everything's very expensive in the Woodlands. Um, now, 
um, a little bit about the area. As I mentioned earlier, it's located in Magnolia. It's part of the Magnolia School District. It's fast growing area. It's in Montgomery County. It's one of the fastest growing counties in the country. And it's just west of the woodlands. You've had explosive population growth. So about 51% population growth over the last decade. And that's expected to continue. Um, you've got a lot of um, uh, great jobs, financial investment in the area. So like I said, three miles from the Woodlands Parkway, uh, 20 minute drive to the Exxon Mobil headquarters. So Exxon Mobil just announced that their headquarters, which used to be in Dallas, now got moved to their camp, Google style campus in North Houston in the Woodlands. So that's 20 minutes drive from there. And then also HP, has their new headquarters as well. And that's a 20 minute drive from this area as well. Um, and also, you know, the Woodlands has world-class hospitals. Um, Houston, the Houston healthcare system is one of the best in the world, you know, especially we have the number one cancer hospital in the world. Uh, and Houston has this, almost this um, decentralized model of ho hospitals. So you have a medical center in the city, but then all of the main hospitals like uh, MD Anderson, Methodist, Memorial Hermann, they all have their branch hospitals in areas like the Woodlands, like Katy, like on the different suburbs to serve those areas. And I've got some articles here and you will have access to this. So I'm sure that you can share this with your investors, the, this material, they can click and, and read the articles on their own as well. Um, now, again, let's talk about some of the specs and some of the finishes. So we have um, granite kitchen countertops, the upscale uh, wood re uh, water resistant, the LVT floors in the main areas, tile backsplash, brush nickel plumbing fixtures, pendant lights. So this is not what you know, these are not the types of finishes that you see in a multifamily like apartment type of construction. This is like luxury materials that they're putting in these, in these properties. Now, the last part is the financials. So again, we're projecting uh, rents at uh, 1895 per side. Uh, one of the units is 1301 square feet. The other one is 1361, slightly bigger than the other. And then this is an annual cash flow projection uh, for a five year hold period. Now, again, I wanna clarify, this does not mean I'm suggesting that you sell it after five years, but in order to do any sort of financial analysis, you have to assume that you sell it at some point in order to have, you know, to be able to calculate certain return numbers. Um, so we have the purchase price of 500, 7,500 in closing costs, which are associated with your loan and 1200 for due diligence if you want to do inspections and so on. And then we have, um, we have uh, the rental income, we have a, a certain amount of allowance for vacancy, um, the property taxes, which I said are, are um, um, these are the full grown property taxes. So yearly, uh, most likely these property taxes are gonna be this amount in year three, not in year one. But what I'd like to do is I run the numbers conservatively. And if you make more money than what I said, I don't think you'll be mad. But if you make less money than what I said, I think you will be mad. So I like to go conservative. And then if you're comfortable with a conservative scenario, then all the realistic, optimistic scenarios, those are all bonuses and gravy, like extra uh, returns. Um, the insurance on these is uh, $800 for both sides because these are townhomes so that lowers your insurance cost and then we have operating expenses which is basically the hoa uh, amount and then um, things like a, a repair allowance now in the first few years because these are brand new repairs are going to be pretty minimal to non-existent but what we're doing is we're establishing a almost like a sinking fund or a repair fund so that in year five, in year six, when you start having repairs to do, there's a fund there that's been accumulating to you know, replace things that might break later on. Um, and then we have the property management and leasing. So this is the net operating income. So the net operating income is the income that the property makes uh, if it were free and clear, like if you paid cash for it. 
So a lot of the investors that we've worked with in the past, for some of them, this is their retirement plan, right? They buy these properties, they operate them well over a period of time, they pay them off. And then when they pay them off, each property produces for them about two to $2,500 a month passive income in retirement. And a lot of times, because these are brand new starting out, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, they're still 10 or 15 years old. So you're not dealing with old properties. They're going to start having chronic problems and you're having to replace major systems. You still have a property that is relatively recently built, certainly by California standards, right? Like a lot of the properties are, you know, especially, or even in the East coast, when you tell people you have stuff that's 10 years old, they're like, what is 10 years old? Like all of our stuff is two, 300, 400 years old. Right. Uh, Agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, and then you have the debt service, and and then you have the 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 net cash flow. As you'll notice, the cash flow on the property grows over time, and the reason why that grows is that, you know, we are. And I'm, by the way, I'm applying very conservative rent growth numbers. So I am assuming that the rent will only grow at three percent. That is very highly unlikely in this in a situation where we have. 8% inflation, right? So most likely the rents are going to grow grow by somewhere between the eight and 10% a year. But if I, if I use that here, it's gonna make it the number looks really pretty. Um, and I would rather go conservative and say, hey, worst case scenario, let's say that the rents only grow by 3%. And worst case scenario, let's say that the expenses also grow by 3%. So over time, you know, your, your, the, the property performs better and better. Um, and the biggest advantage here is like, I'm also only assuming a 5% property growth rate. Last year, properties in Houston went up 15%, 16%. This year, they're projected to go up another 15, 16%. And this type of property, like we are now in a lower cash flow environment than we were um say even five or six years ago but what what has happened is the returns that were coming from cash flow are now coming from growth right because at the same time that the cash flow has shrunk the growth has increased and the you know when when you i had an investor um last year that sold a property that they had bought 10 years ago and they sold it and they made money on it and they did really really well and what one thing that we noticed is when we ran the numbers, even though that they had bought the property 10 years ago and the cash flow was spectacular back then, when you look at the entire numbers, 81% of their money came from the fact that the property grew in value. Only 19% of the money came from the cash flow, right? So we are in a situation right now where if you're buying a property with 25% down and let's say, you know, the, the growth in property values is 10%, then that means that your return is 40% because the, the, the leverage multiplies the, the level of return for you. So the cash flow is there, you know, to make sure that you op you're operating the property correctly, that you don't have negative cash flow, you don't have to feed it out of your pocket, right? But where the majority, the, the, the the number one feature of these types of properties, especially in an area like the woodlands, just west of the woodlands, is that it's a it's a wealth building asset, more so than a cash flowing asset. Yes, it cash flows. Yes, it, 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 there's no negative cash flow, but the primary feature of it is to grow your net worth, and it does that really really well. And we're in a situation right now where, like I said, interest rates. You know, with these you can get a fixed. 30 year mortgage and, and your payments are fixed while there's inflation, which means that the real value of your payments over time goes down, even though you're paying the same amount, you know, towards your mortgage while the value of your property also increases. Well, Ariane, that totally makes sense. Uh, you know, uh, my, mem my members are part of my organization and it's my job is to educate my investors and I totally agree with you. I mean, uh, when, when, a, when an investor look at this kind of uh, product, 
they, 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 they have to look beyond positive cash flow. Yes, we're getting a, a good, uh, you know, uh, a decent positive cash flow, but you have to look at the total return. You have to look at the, the uh, you know, uh, the return in you know, the second, third, and fourth year, right? The, the appreciation. If you calculate the total ROI in addition to the cash on cash return, in addition to paying down the mortgages, the renter that is paying down your mortgages, uh, your total return is really double digit and even triple digit a few years down the road. So uh, yeah. don't worry. I, 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 I agree with you the way you explain it. Uh, no different than the way I explained to my investors that uh, you have to look at a total financial picture to make an informed decision to buy this type of uh, unique uh, uh, product. Yeah. And then finally, uh, this is the uh, uh, sketch of the elevation and floor plan, just to give you an idea of the layout. You know, so you, you enter the property here, there's a two car garage in the front, enter the property, you have the, the living room, dining room with the kitchen, you go into the hallway, and then you have the secondary bath, third bedroom, second bedroom, um, and uh, here's the laundry room, and then the master suite. So each unit has a laundry room inside. So they all they have their washer and dryer inside the unit. Um, on the other the other floor plan, you go in here, big room like island overlooking everything, wide open floor plan, and then the hallway is the same. And you got covered patio on both sides, and then the fence is right here. And that's the that's the presentation. Well, Arian, uh, uh, my my takeaway from your presentation, Arian, is uh, again I've been doing this for a long time, and many of my investors have been part of my network for many many years. And I have to say, without any exaggeration, uh, that uh, this particular duplex product is really. Uh, on, I'm speaking only on behalf of our investors, is really above expectations. What I mean by that is, you know, I, I usually have a, you know, blueprint of, um, uh, you know, my benchmark for, for how to analyze a particular property. And your, your, the, the attributes of this property, this duplex has exceeded all my benchmark. We're talking total returns. We're talking about the quality of the uh, construction the location, the, uh, you know, everything. I mean, I'm not gonna repeat what you, what you said throughout the whole presentation. So, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, coincidentally, you know, value the, your company, value builders, uh, it, just, it just makes sense. You, you guys provide value above and beyond in what a, a real estate investors would expect. So it, that's a good name. <laughs> it, it just coincides with your philosophy, with yeah. the success, with the track record that you guys have over, over you know over this past decade and and then some so uh yeah i mean for any for any uh, one of the things i wanted to add if i can like one of the things that we are interested in doing is yes we're talking about this specific project i'm going to also share you a little plat map that shows like what lots we have available oh good 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 yeah but, but what we're really looking to do is build relationships with you and your network because we are looking to invest in the in the long term relationship where we're working with you over this project and in the future. So it's not just about hey we have these buildings to sell, but it's more like hey how can we work together so that in the future as we build, you know, I was telling you before the call that we have another project in the Dallas area that has both duplexes and fourplexes and that one phase 2 of that one is coming in the summer. You know, so we're going to have product there um, and, you know, I would love to do another one of these with you um, later in the year where we share the details of that project and that location with your investor. So it's not just about, hey, you know, let's um, let's sell whatever duplexes we have. It's more about the long term relationship is what we're after. Yeah, I agree, Ariane. So currently, I believe you have four of the duplexes remaining and those duplexes are that are already completed. I mean, they are ready to be occupied, ready to be sold for remaining duplex. Am I, am I right? Uh, uh, no, so the, the four duplexes that I have available are to be built and they are going to be completed in November. Okay. Can you see, can you see the plat map? Yes. Okay, so we released these in um, the last Tuesday. Okay, so we, we released 10 lots and here's the other thing. When Value Builders releases lots for sale, right? Our 
interest list from investors, it was about 40 people deep for, for phase two. So if, I, if they were to give me all four, 40 duplexes to sell and I put them on the market to sell, we could probably sell them in, in a month, month and a half, all of them. But the reason why they do it this in batches of 10 is because he's very conscientious about the leasing part, right? What you don't want to do is you don't want to build 40 duplexes all at the same time. And then you have 80 units for lease all at the same time and you flood the market with rentals. So what they do instead is they know what the absorption rate is for this area. And the absorption rate for this area is somewhere between nine and 12 duplex units per month can be leased reasonably. So what they do is they release 10. And then when they release the next 10 is 45 to 60 days later, which means that there's a 60, 45 to 60 day gap in between the two phases in which this phase can be leased out. So you don't have a glut of inventory and put downward pressure on rents. Okay. Well, Arian, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Wow, your builder really understand what our investors are thinking, uh, thinking about. So uh, you guys put your shoes uh, to the best interest of the investor and what makes it uh, uh, beneficial for the investor, uh, really. Yeah, so, so we released these 10 on Tuesday. We've, we have contracts on, on six of them. And then there's a, a, a contract out on one. Um, so right now, it has not been signed yet. So until it's signed, it's not sold. But these are the four that I have that are available um, at this moment. Um, and again, like I'm, I'm holding calls like this with investors daily, as you can imagine, because the market is, there's a lot of interest on these now. But you know, we would love to work with your your network, you know, to to get some of your investors, you know, in this phase. Uh, there's going, to, you know, typically in in phase one, every time they release the batch, there would be a price increase with the next batch, uh, and that's you know that that's not just a matter of oh we just want to sell them for more money, but it's also it's in response to like the environment uh, that we're in now with. Uh, you know, uh, supply chain issues and, and COVID inflation on things like sheetrock, like lumber and things, uh, things of that nature. So, you know, chance we're going to have more product coming up. Those are likely to be a slightly higher price than these. Um, but, you know, so if you have a, you know, if you have somebody who is ready to go, I would jump on these uh, before the next phase comes out. But if, you know, if you miss out on these, then we're going to have more you know, coming in probably about 45 days. Yeah, so, so if I, uh, okay, uh, can you share our big screen now? I mean, can, uh, can you go back to our regular screen? Yeah, so uh, Arian, yeah, if I understand you correctly, so what I do is uh, my, the way we do it with our network, uh, if I identify any uh, serious investors uh, for my network who's ready to go, of course, uh, they go through me for pre-screening process. That's how we do it, just so you know. Okay. Uh, and and I, I, pre I have a phone consultation with my investor, make sure they are serious, they, are, they can pull the trigger, make sure they are loan approved, okay? That's a criteria which I would not deviate. Uh, so, uh, so then when I pre-screen my investors, uh, then if they clearly they're ready to go and I'll send them to you and then uh, then they work with you then you wait until the lot becomes available after you work with them if our if any investor decide to buy one of the property uh, uh, there's reserve the lot they put an earnest earnest money deposit of five thousand dollars if I if I understand it correctly uh, so the house will be completed by uh, October, November. I, I assume there are no escalation clause in case of any, uh, uh, I mean, whatever the, the, the investor signed the lot contract for that price, the, am I to understand there are no escalation clause? Yeah, oh, in so the builder, builder contracts, all builder contracts have um, clauses in them about escalation. But what I will tell you is this, is that in the Dallas project, which was sold prior to COVID, um, the, um, they had sold a lot of these units. And then when the prices of lumber went up, right, he had, the builder had the right to go to them and say, look, I can't build it for that price anymore. Here's your earnest money back and I'm gonna re-market them. 
but this builder did not do that because the reason why he did not do it is that would be like keeping him from a short-term loss but it would create a much bigger long-term loss because all of, like i said all of the people that are buying these are repeat clients they're buying their third their fourth their fifth you know so if you know if you um pull out of that contract from that investor you might be okay for this one but they're not coming back to you and buying again in the future because that trust is broken so uh, you know some other builders that i know in the area that build this type of product they all went back they all you know scraped their contracts and then started over again value builders did not do that you know so this is not a matter of you know i mean obviously if you know if if it's a situation where um you know the cost of materials rises dramatically you know then they have to look at that but you know even during something like covid when that happened you know the they showed it with their actions they did they they did not do that they honored their contracts and they closed them you know they they bit the bullet but then a lot of those people that bought in phase 1 now they're buying in phase 2 and that's kind of the the philosophy the reason why they've done so well since 1992 when they started building well, Arian, I mean, I walking away from this presentation, and I don't say this too often because I work with many builders over the years, many turnkey providers, many different markets. Uh, I, I have to say honestly that uh, I I'm truly impressed. I mean, you guys are honest, you guys are transparent, you uh, you do what's right for the investor, uh, and uh, you have a long term relationship. You. The fact that you have repeat buyers that, you know, you know, it's all about referrals and repeat buyers and you don't need to market your properties to, uh, to uh, increase cost. So, you know, I mean, nothing else I need to say. I mean, <laughs> I am, I, you know, I would love, I would, definitely we can work together for consistently for, uh, for a long time to come. Arian, you have any, uh, before I let you go, I think the presentation ran longer than, than usual, but it's, it's great content, great education. Uh, you know, if our investors look at all the attributes that you discuss on this presentation, I mean, if our investors had the motivation, they had the financial resources to do the deal. I mean, I just can't see why they can't do it. They won't do it. It's just, it's just, it's, just, it's very impressive. I have to say this. So uh, you have any one last minute word uh, uh, for your recap? Well, we really appreciate you guys having us on. Um, and again, we're we're all about building relationships for the future. You know, we're an active builder. We're always looking for, you know, like we're currently working on the projects that are going to be in line two years from now, three years from now. So we are not, you know, just doing a project here and there. We we want to be able to continue and feed the investors that rely on us for this type of product. Um, and we appreciate the opportunity and look forward to working with you. Same here. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Arian Shahaf, and uh, thank you so much. This is Xi Wing Yi from the Yeroos Network. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a nice day. Goodbye.